do it. But up, do you ever get the urge to do the song? <gasps> Hello friends, welcome once again to the Burn Candy Podcast. It's the best kind of podcast because it's what kind of podcast and it's your kind of podcast and it's all kind of podcast and it's time for the podcast. So let's start the podcast right now. No. You hit every one of those words. Yeah, Good I was job, mouthing Sos. it. You know yeah, it. I miss it. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh, what are the l- lyrics again? And <laughs> oh then my I God. came through. It's like riding a bike. Yeah, you know what? Episode 336. Welcome, everybody. I like that number two. I thought you would. Three, it's divisible three by six. three, so. And like the first number plus oh, the second number equals I see. the third number. Oh, that's even better. Yup. Okay, great. And we're off to a great start, everybody. Yes. How's everybody doing? Like, is what's new in the summertime yeah, and all that doing? stuff? How's it going? Did you get your summer bathing suit yet? Are you like guys <laughs> wearing it? Looking I cute? I have got to quit buying bathing suits. I have to buy a bathing suit. I haven't bought a single one in probably like a year plus. It is time, lady. I, I know. What style are you into? I don't know anymore because mm-hmm. I think my body's just changed a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh-huh. And ones that like used to come up a lot higher on me are now really low cut. I'm like, I don't know what happened, but what grew. Most other parts shrank and I don't know, but I think I'm into, I, I'm definitely a one piece scal mm-hmm. and I'm into something with a really high cut leg. Yeah. Oh yeah. The 80 style. Love that. I'm I into that. I did get a great one on Amazon like last year that was $8.95. Whoa. And it was a, uh, a one piece that's like that. Those ones are often careful, really like, crowd pleasers. It's like it's like low back and sometimes the sleeves. Like if I, I can't be like, you know, playing an aggressive game of beach volleyball in this thing. <laughs> Sarah, Maybe a regular you're game. always thinking about activities. Yes, I am. Oh Lord, you know. Well, I can't wait to see you doing some cannonballs. Yeah, and you've got all the cute mismatchy pieces that I yeah, love. I, I saw do. that with like the blue or like green, but then white with green stripes. I was like, oh, I see what you did there. That's so cute. Oh my God. I really do keep thinking, why does Sarah keep seeing me? Like, why do you, you like notice stuff about me? You know, it's because like, I'm not as distracted with school. Oh yeah, probably. That's a good point. Look at the world. Look at all these wonderful things about my friends that I just love. I totally know what you mean. You know? Yeah. It's like I came out of, of some weird, you know. Torture chamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was the same way. And I'm like, oh, the world oh opens my up to gosh. you. Gosh, is it always been this sunny outside? Has the air always smelled this clean? Yeah. Oh my God, I have a story. Oh yeah, I, love I forgot. Story. I was waiting to tell you. Oh, yeah. Oh, she looks so, so excited about this. I am. Too. Well, because I know. I think you'll think like it's it. fun. Yes. So, I love cemeteries. Yeah. Do you like them or not? Really? I do. I think there's certain type of people that. Yes. Like, I told you my mom used to take us on trips to that. We took a road trip through the Southwest and we stopped at different cemeteries and then picked our favorite like tombstone and then we took a rock and then made a rock garden at our house. Oh. So yeah, it was like a family thing. I'm into it. Yeah. I find them to be very peaceful. Yeah. It's that thing where you feel disconnected in a good way, yeah. like, but connected to the earth and, mm-hmm. and also generations and yep. mortality. Deep understanding of the cycle of life. Yes. Mortality. And because I'm into religion, there's often yes. like those mm-hmm. cues on the gravestones, whatever. So... I'm in a cemetery and uh, have a look. What? What? Zoom what? in on that baby. Oh, wow. Oh, it looks witchy. Look at that. So this uh, tombstone is for a Sarah Rice. Yep. Daughter Sarah Rice. And there's a pagan yep. symbol totally above it. So she's like a witchy woman. Wow. Look at all these Rice. Fa- this is the Rice family graveyard you yes. found yes joseph rice right next door <laughs> nancy rice and martha rice right behind him wow i mean that was really weird that to looks see though straight up like what should be on my tombstone if i weren't donating my body to science right yeah wife of walter d stoss daughter sarah j i wish it was w i know that's the only bad much. part yeah but i loved of all of them that that was a pagan symbol that is very yeah. unusual right. for Let's see. Well, it was named after witches. So. Wow, this person lived a long time. Yeah. 1892 uh-huh. to 1970, and she was wow. super witchy. Well, that Do, makes sense. It does not freak you out to see your name on a tombstone? No, not at all. You're so edgy. It, it's so <laughs> weird that in a way it feels like, like, oh yeah, the Sarah Rice that came, like, I don't know. It feels peaceful in a way. Really? Yeah. Is your name real common? 
Do you Sarah, know a lot of Sarah is. Sarah Rice's though? Mm, I don't know about Rice. I well, it was taken on Google when I tried to get that as my Gmail account way back in the day. That's annoying. So mine yeah. too though, and yeah. my name is very unusual. Yeah, there's not a lot of Meisters roaming around. No. Thank goodness. <laughs> We're not, we don't come from good genes. Well, we have like an inferior gene pool, I no. think. We're all like colonizers who murder people. I know it. So oh, yeah. We're going to go back to that. But I thought maybe you'd think it was spooky. I, spooky. <laughs> I do, but like the best way. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. That's like... So people who love ASMR are going to love what you're I doing know. right now. <laughs> Susie's eating a banana. I am so sorry. I was just really hungry. You need it. We got a long day here. What's that thing that people have misophonia or whatever? Misophonia? Well, where they can't handle was... the sound of people eating. Ah, oh, well, I used to hate the sound of people eating bananas, and I used to hate the word banana. Only I like I didn't like the food because oh my god, you're so funny shoving it in your mouth. No, I'm fine now because I would say it sounds the same way when you say the word as when you chew it, which I've definitely what talked about. What is the on name here. for that? I mean, I called it an edible onomatopoeia. Yeah, but you're right. That I didn't know if that was the actual. You've... <laughs> You feel like a b- banana sounds like banana. it. Banana. <laughs> yeah. Banana, banana, banana. Given our history with uh, rotten bananas, right? you would think right. this would have come up already. I, you know, it's so funny you say that because like for a year, maybe more, I didn't eat bananas because I like couldn't and I just, it like, I don't know, it was like a trigger for me. Yeah. And it was almost like, oh, stupid bananas. And then I just, really what I thought is... If I eat this and I'm out in public and somebody sees me eating banana, are they going to make a stupid comment? And then I'm like, I can't handle that. And uh, so I didn't eat bananas for forever. And then I tried one and I was like, damn, I love bananas. I forgot. Why did I let some stupid person ruin a fruit for me? I can't have that. (laughs) He ruined fruit. And so now I like, but I do love all those like t-shirts that have like little bananas on them and stuff. And I can't buy them because. No. I just. Although you you can, Sarah. I mean, I could, but it's. I'm fine, but it's that one person who's going to make the comment. I'm like, oh, God, I just don't need that. Yeah. Did you, I mean, this really should be for another, for our Patreon where we keep our challenge content. But did you read the headline about how he, Johnny Bananas, ran up on stage like Kanye? Yep. And I was, I'm sure you got tagged in it. I sure did. And um, I just thought, okay, we've crossed People tagged me saying like, oh, he's used to stealing prizes from people yeah because it was an awards show they ended up editing it out i'm glad they did some someone else what was it love and hip-hop uh-huh. won best reality yeah. show or something and he, and he ran up like kanye did mm-hmm. with taylor swift except he's just a loser right. and he's now bought into mm-hmm. the whole right but like if he's gonna do it he's gonna do it and it's more like I just thought, how can you have that kind of confidence? I, 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 I would never I wouldn't either. feel comfortable doing that. Like you, you have to kind of look at it and say, okay, so this, I'm going to get a lot of negative feedback or a lot of negative whatever from this. And kind of like this, any press is good press. There's no such thing as bad press. Sure. Kind of like even if you came to that conclusion, like this will be worth it for yeah. the click I think or whatever. he's done that. Okay. But... I even if I came to that conclusion, I would still not have the courage. Right, I couldn't either. Or whatever you want to call that. Right. To hijack someone else's moment, and I. But just if thought, you hijacked a bunch of little moments over and over, and you somehow got positive feedback, like yeah. rewarded for that, which yes. is what he's done. Yeah. Then you go, well, this is a good idea because I did that once, and this was the result. And he's got to keep doing something to make himself stand out. Like it's really just a, like a kid who's not getting attention. And they they use negative attention as like they'll take anything, even if it's negative attention. Yeah. And I think that he hasn't been re- receiving the attention that he feels like he deserves or is entitled to or something. So now he's got to like act out like the kid in class well, and you who's know how, raising like, his hand and won't when shut people up. do drugs, they're always chasing that first high. Yes, that's what this feels like. I totally he has agree to keep with that. Raising, up in the ante. yeah, yes, yeah, Suze. and it's been so effective for so long. But this one seemed to yeah. backfire, and eventually, there's like a tipping point where people, more people, are going, "Okay, that is annoying, and you shouldn't have done that." Then are going, "Wow, oh, he's so cool!" That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think he's reached that. Unfortunately for him, reached that tipping point where. Now people are like, oh, sh- sit down and shut up. Well, nobody cares about what you have to say anymore, well, especially when MTV. you go interrupt love and hip-hop. And it felt like 
this seems like what's going on in the world right now. The white like, guy. entitled white guy runs up and says, oh, well, we should have received... Like, sit down. It's not your turn. Yeah. It's trashy. They picked somebody else this time. You're going to have to deal with it. Right. Yeah. Um, I sh- yeah. It just came to my mind, so I thought I'd... Because yeah. we hadn't talked about it. No, we haven't. We try not to. You know. Um, all right. Well, let's move on then. Let's. What should we talk about? Hmm. I feel like there was some stuff I wanted to share. Oh, I know one thing I want to share. This is so fun. Yeah. Oh, tell I'm me. I'm genuinely really into yeah. this. So <laughs> I love all these new companies that come out that are trying to solve problems, you know. Love that. But that you never thought of, but you know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah. So have you ever rented a self-storage mm-hmm. unit? Me yes, too. It is the worst. It is the worst. You have to get gather all your crap, take it down to the self-storage place. It's usually gross. Yes. And there's all kinds of opportunity for stuff like infestations and yeah. weird stuff. Yeah. And then anytime you need anything in there. Forget it. Right. So like... If I were thinking, how could I solve this? I'd be like, I got nothing. Yeah. Well, someone came up with a great idea. What? They come to... Clutter is yeah. called. Clutter comes name. to your house and they take everything that you want to store and then they take a picture of each item. Yeah. They put it into storage. Anytime you want an item... Oh, get out. You just click on the picture of it and they bring it to you this for free. This is like free. a coat locker, like a valet for all of your stuff. And it's all included. And it's, Get out! Yeah, and it's the same cost that you would pay for the crappy thing. Stop. Yeah. I'm getting this. I'm so excited about it. Because I have things like, I can name it. It's my surfboard, my snowboard, my bikes that I'm not using that often, but take up a ridiculous amount of space. But if I had that on call with all that and we're like, hey, can you bring me my surfboard? Right. And oh, I'd be so happy. Like they can, let's say you're going on a snowboarding trip yes. and you're at work and you need your snowboard to go and you're going to the airport. They'll bring it to your work. Get out. And then you can just leave and go there. Like they'll take it this wherever is totally you are. A valet service for it's so awesome. This is great. And I, since I have used self storage, I'm like, oh, this will solve the problem for a lot of people. Cause they, the places where they rent are far outside of the city. Yeah. So they get cheaper. Oh, good. Off, uh, what do you call that? Like, you know, they pay yeah. less overhead. Yeah. So then they have included the service for free. They bring you this stuff. And I just think it's a time saver. It's a money saver mm-hmm. and peace of mind. Yeah. It's so great. And you don't have to worry about the gross weirdness. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a clutter has a great sign up bonus for our listeners. You get $50 off your first month. When you sign up at clutter.com slash brain candy, that's on top of Clutter's no hassle moving online inventory management, free pickup and delivery, and price match guarantee. See why Clutter is better and get fifty dollars off your first month at Clutter.com slash brain candy. That's clutter.com slash brain candy and enter promo code brain candy at checkout. Sweet. Yeah, I thought that was fun. So there you go. I'm helping you guys. Yeah, just doing the Lord's work over here. Oh, I have something. This I like looking through my notes of like things I wrote down to talk to Susie about. Sometimes these are you know, uh, good stories. <laughs> and sometimes it's just things like what pisses me off today. Oh, I love those. And so I was like, Oh, what should our segment be? Here's what annoys me most today is like <laughs> what I'm going to call this. Okay. This one, I am done people. The pedestrian hand up when I'm in the parking lot structure and like, I'm coming around a turn and like somebody's walking across the crosswalk. I'm not going to hit you. I see you, but the passive aggressive hand up where it's like, sl- like uh, careful. No. Like, what do you, th- first of all, what is your hand going to do if I know. this were a serious thing? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I, and I, I see you. We're actually making eye contact. There's no way I'm going to run you down. What's with the hand? Is do it just you, anxious people? Does this happen to you a lot? Well, I know what you're, where you're going with of like, maybe I am <laughs> getting too I'm close to curious. people. I'm it's, it happened probably like four times in the last maybe six months, maybe more than that, but like, or maybe in a short amount of time, but after and about four And who is times. doing it, man? Yes. Yeah. Almost, unless it's one of those, she's definitely calling the manager white ladies. Oh yeah. They do it. Uh-huh. And sometimes I think it's, they do it when they like see that I have tattoos, I feel like. You know? I'm sure. I think it's that. Like, oh, or if I'm listening to like oh, loud music or whatever, and they're like, oh, 
fuck, slow down. Like, you You're know. one of those people that's become like a problem in the neighborhood. Oh, my God. I mean, like at least at the South Coast Plaza because that's usually <laughs> where I am where they do this. Sarah goes like, barreling down. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. Like a guy did that to me yesterday. And I'm like, what do you actually think is good? I wanted to stop it. I'm like, what do you think was going to happen here, sir? You need to next time. Next time I will. Because w- they just are trying to shame you. Yeah. And to make sure you know they're judging you. Yeah. That's what that hand right. is doing. It's not anything other than that. Yeah. It's really gross. And if we were in New York, Mm. they would never do... This would not be a problem because pedestrians, it's like a different... In California, like they always have the right of way and it's basically like you can like jump out in front of a car and like... And it's their fault. Yeah. It might be worse in Orange County too. I think it is. Yeah. What is that about? Like they really want it to be orderly. Yeah. And they don't like anybody that might disrupt that. And you have tattoos, <sighs> so you really might disrupt that. It. I yep. bet in their mind. Yep. Yeah. And they kind of give me this look like you don't belong at this mall. Wow. Yeah. Sarah's being discriminated totally. against. Totally. In the parking lot. I bet that doesn't happen to you a lot though, because discriminated against. Yeah. Most people know you. Well, I mean, it depends on where I go. You right. Know? They don't like you in the yeah. suburbs. Yeah. Like, remember I was telling you about the woman who I had like a brief conversation with about, you know, oh, you work in Santa Ana? I work there too. And she's like, oh, at a restaurant? And she like had a Sarah, student. we have not told we the haven't. audience that. Yeah. Tell that story. It is unbelievable well, to me. Well, first I want to say, I there is, I have, as somebody who, well, I've worked in like a couple of restaurants here and there, but there is nothing wrong with Absolutely that Absolutely not. I loved working that, in a restaurant. So I, we're camping. When we were camping, we're at this uh, uh campsite that's kind of on the corner of where like two main paths are. There's a lot of foot traffic. So this like husband and wife and their little like two-year-old baby are like walking by and you know they start chatting with us and the dog baby's playing with the dog and uh you know Lamb's like oh where do you guys live? They're like oh we're living like near Santa Ana and I go oh I work in Santa Ana and the woman looks at me and she's like the kind of woman who's like way too cute dressed for camping and yeah, is like wearing right. a hat like one of those felt she's hats like, an influencer. like yeah totally like there's definitely a lot of pictures happening like uh, 500 pictures and only one's getting posted is that and which is again <laughs> Wait, nothing wrong this, with that was this me right <laughs> <laughs> was I there <laughs> right yeah and so you know she were and I'm like busy like making the fire or something and like not really I just like didn't want to be chit chatting with people. Yeah, that's the worst. And uh, and I was like, oh, CNN. I work. I work near there. I work there. And she goes, oh, like at a restaurant. And I can't. Says it in this way of like super judgy, like oh, like you work at a restaurant, as if just <sighs> like really what she was saying is oh, because you're like a bartender, right? I just and I want to be like, <clears throat> but no, Sarah, I ran a mental health program for <sighs> even. Youth. But guessing anyone's. Profession right. is a weird thing. It is a weird thing. It felt weird. And I was like, oh, now I have a problem with her. I cannot believe. And I was like, oh, where do you work? The Gap? Do like, you think like, she knew that it's yeah, slipped no, out no. in like foot and mouth type of thing? Or do you think she's oblivious? No, I think she's oblivious. And Who I was guesses like, mm, an occupation? No, I don't. That's not what I do. But like the fact that, and it wouldn't matter if I did. Right. Then, well, even if you did, it would be weird for you, her to guess yes, that. Yes, it would. It would be weird. Because it's like, what are you basing that yes, on? Yes, on what I look like, is it? And that's what I felt in that moment. I was like, wow, she came up with her idea, like a whole assumption, like made a whole story about me f- without me saying one word to her. The only thing I said was, oh, I work in Santa Ana too. That is bizarre. And it was like, oh, and then I want to be like, here's my card. Do you think her intention though... Was just honest. Like no, she it just kind of felt like she was dig. about to tell me, like, like it felt like a dig, and it felt like she needed to do something to separate her, like that kind of how she is versus how I am. When like, you said like no, I do. I didn't. This other I don't thing. even think I said that. I oh, was you just didn't. Like, no, and then I, I, in my mind, I was like, "This isn't not worth. What am I? This isn't worth it." I just said, "Like, really? I think I just said no." And then her kid picked up a rock and threw it at Sigmund, oh and my I God. was like, "Not okay," you know. And I was like, "Whoa," you know. And so they had to like handle the kid because his kid's like, and I'm like, "Be less judgy about me and whatever the heck you think I do, and more judgy about your kid who's trying to like throw rocks at my dog." Oh my God. So I was just like, ugh, lady. Sometimes I do stuff on purpose. Like if I sense that type oh, of vibe yeah. and they're I like, would've. so anyway, what do you, what do you do? I'm like, I always just say, I'm, I'm a slacker. <laughs> I'm going to do that next time. Like, what do you care? I, mean, I just, I'm like a slacker or like, you know, 
Yeah, I just sit just around. Like sticking my feet up and or eat bonbons. I know? go the other way and I'm like, I'm a hustler, baby. Yeah. And I don't even tell them what I do. Because right. why? Yeah, why? It's With really just an like opportunity that. to be judged. Yes, yes. Yeah. I knew it. I knew exactly. And then as soon as she walked away, I looked at Landon and I was like, oh, in a restaurant? Like that. <laughs> he was like, what? And I'm like, oh, come on. You don't know what that, I'll tell you in what fe- in women terms what that was right there. Oh my God. We translate that to you too. Didn't he think like, what if someone woman. said that to him? Oh, do you work in a restaurant? He would be like, what? Yeah. Oh, my God. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's one of those things where, like, there's so much confidence and you're like, you're like, no, I wouldn't care. But when, you know, because, I don't know. I think everyone would care. It's kind of like when you're really fit and somebody accuses you of being fat. You're like, oh, okay, that's, Wait, shut that's up. a thing? No, I'm just saying, like, because Landon, like, if it were reversed where, you know, somebody were like, oh, you were, he's like, well, no, I don't. And he... He's solid enough and confident enough in his role and his job and everything to like not be offended by that comment. Yeah. Or maybe this like place of weird like transition that I am in my work or you know feeling like the the uh, the financial like the payout and all that stuff of the many hours of work I've put in hasn't really evened out yet. So yeah. I feel like I got a lot to prove. Of like, no, I don't do that. I just. Got a freaking master's degree and worked so hard to get that so yeah. that I, you know, maybe don't have to work at a restaurant. Like, yeah, I know that feeling. <sighs> so I have another fun thing to tell you about. Tell me. So you know how we have the cameras, you know, like where you yes. were running around naked mm-hmm. in my I'm house. familiar. Th- those are ring cameras. They have them, you know, out by the door yeah. and all that stuff. Well, now ring has, um, an app. Oh, that cool. It allows you to connect with um, other people in your area. Oh, I've heard about this. And it creates a, what do they call it? A ring, like safety. It's like a net. Like yeah. a, <laughs> a ring. A ring. Yeah. A ring. Oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> a ring ring. And you receive like real time crime and yes. safety alerts from your neighbors. This is great. It's like. The new neighborhood. I was watch. just you stole the words right out of my mouth. Remember yeah. those signs with like the the burglary looking guy on it that said yeah. like neighborhood watch. Here? Yes, yeah, and it's free, and so you oh, can great. just download the um, Ring app on your phone and then have some good times because I mean it's serious biz. Like you want to yeah. see what's cooking in your neighborhood, but it's also kind of funny because you know that stuff that some people catch on their devices is hilarious. I, I was thinking the other day I left my garage open and then I just you know took off and I didn't close it. And then I was like, oh, I left my garage open. And then I thought, mm, I'm fine. Here's why. I got cam- the ring cameras everywhere. I go, I yeah. know a couple neighbors do. True. Anybody who is like, say somebody did come by a UPS guy or whatever comes by and is like, oh, the- nobody's going to do anything now because everything they're, they've got, they can just look at the cameras. Yeah. So and the-, the whole neighborhood's safe. Well, even when we hosted the event here, yeah. I was like, well, I'm pretty comfortable yeah. because- a, we have all the suspects. <laughs> right. <laughs> and B, we have cameras yes. that can tell me if people are taking my crap. Um, yeah, it's but great. This app is so great because it makes it easier for neighbors to work together, keep the community safe. There's millions of people using it already. It's like the new neighborhood watch, like I said, powered by real people. So if you want to help make sure you and your neighborhood are safe, download the free neighbors app today. Go to ring.com slash candy to download from iOS or Android app stores. That's ring.com slash candy. Um, make your neighborhood safer today with the Ring Neighbors app. Oh, it's the Neighbors app. I want to make sure you guys know. With the Neighbors app by Ring. The neighbors yeah, app. Neighbors app. You know, now that you mention that, I think my aunt texted me that a bit ago because she did it in her neighborhood. That's and she's fun. like, here's this app you should get. Yeah, That's do it. That's probably it. And then we'll keep tabs on everybody. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, she had to get it because uh, somebody took down her fence. Like, not took down, but, like, she came outside one day and her entire fence that lined her house was, like, like somebody had hit it and not told her, not done anything. So she was like, what the heck happened here? And she goes to her neighbors who have that security system. She's like, did you by any chance get anything on camera? And they did, and it was the mailman mm. who took the turn too sharp or whatever with the mail truck. We would took have put our arm fence. out. I would have stuck him. my arm out at him for sure. <gasps> took out the fence and then kept and then just went about his business. Didn't say anything. What didn't, did she do? Isn't this crazy? So she takes. The, she has the video. She goes to the police and she's like, 
okay, so this happened. My fence got taken out. They say, oh, this is a problem for the post office. Like, you have to talk to the post office about it. Why? That they're not because there's not enough... Then they also said, "Oh, you need to talk to your insurance." That they like it's not a criminal thing, Why? even though it was like a straight what up hit and run. That's about? what I said. The cops were like, mm, "We can't really help you with this. Talk to the post office or whatever." She got like sent around, around, around. What around, if it around. were just a citizen, not a worker? You know, like yeah, good point. I don't know, but they the police I basically can't. were like, "You should talk to the post office," and the post office was like, "You should talk to your insurance." And eventually, she was like. Oh, for Christ's sake, I just got to give up. And somebody else had vandalized her fence previously. And so she had already gone through insurance for it. She's like, well, I don't want to. And she ended up just, I think, paying out of pocket for it because... Did she ever confront the mailman? Oh, that's a good question. I'll follow up and see if she did. I am so mad. Right. I should say I was postal so mad worker. Too. We don't know if it was I, a it man. It was a man. I was so mad. I was like, I am pissed for you. Because it just felt like she was totally taken advantage of and... You know, given the runaround. And, that is terrible. Yeah, so she got herself one of those, and then she sent me that link afterwards, and it's got to be the same thing. <sighs> Holy smokes. Like, yeah, never yeah, again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Good to know. Yep. Form the neighbors of the mailman who has terrible driving record. Who wouldn't leave a note? Right, that's the part that's annoying. It's really... I told Adam I'm, I want to have, like, my motto is just, who would do that? Who would do that? I say it 50 times a no day. No joke. I don't know why. It must be me. No, it's not. Because if, like, I think about that lady that said, do you work at that yeah, restaurant? Like, who, do who does that? Right. I don't know. I don't get people mm, at all. I read a tweet yeah. where someone was like, humans were never meant to live this close together. <laughs> like, there's too many of us now. No. And I'm starting to wonder if that's true. My brother was saying that when I told him that, you know, we went, we were on our camping trip and like, oh, we didn't make it all 18 days. We ended up coming home. He's like, well, how long were you gone? 10 days. He's like, just you too? I'm like, yeah. He's like, humans are not supposed to be together for that long. Yeah. It's like, you need a break. It was right. too long. Yeah. You need on at least one day where you can like go off and do your own thing. Yeah. It's too much. Close quarters too. Well, that's why the real world and road rules are so screwy. Yep. And Big Brother and all those. Yep. It's not natural. No, it's not. And obviously, it brings out the worst in people, yeah. which is why it's yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. But. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'll be offering up my therapeutic services when this episode airs. I think I will have my license number, my associate number. So much and paperwork. You will be able to find me. Uh, at psychologytoday.com under Sarah Patterson, my profile. Did you put, you like, your specialty be? was reality TV stuff? Uh, well, I'm still putting together the bio, but oh, it okay. will be up. And, yeah, it will say that on there, that I work with that population. But it'll say a bunch of other things, too, like marriage and children and, yeah. you know. Yeah, she's not a one-trick pony, and you guys. Depression and Somebody actually sent, let me see if I have it. Yes. Let's but, see. You know, tell your friends if you're in the SoCal area and you need a therapist. Yeah. You can come see me. Right. That's exciting. Yes. Watch for Sarah yes. at psychologytoday.com. Yes. Um, Maureen had sent a video about reality TV. Mm. It was about someone who had been on X on the Beach. Oh, yes. Is this the one that was canceled? The show? Did you hear? No. Oh, they, the next season of X on the Beach? They already shot it. Yeah. Or something happened where they are pulling it because one of the cast members commits suicide. Well, after? Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, somebody sent me that link. Maybe that was an old Maybe. story. Maybe. What's this Cause one? Because I did read about a suicide. Yeah. Um, this was just about a girl who went on it and said that she felt pressure to have sex on camera. Oh, yeah. And mm. she was just saying, you know how difficult it was and how it's not right. It's not. And that she had done other shows and she hadn't had that experience, but on this particular mm. one. And she was just like, what is this, a porn set? It's like a culture in, amongst the produ- the crew too. Yeah. It does depend on who mm-hmm. is producing it, but like you can understand why they do it because yeah. it's their livelihood and they need to get the shot. Mm-hmm. But when you're that person... I mean, mm, during really the Democratic debates, Trump tweeted out boring. <sighs> and I thought it, it triggered to me the way that, uh-huh. you know, boring now, now is like the ultimate insult. Yes. And that reality TV has taught <sighs> us that the virtue is to be entertaining. Even if it's wow. gar- like you're a terrible person, that yep. that's the value. Yep. 
And I remember on my season, this was 20 years ago, and even then they took us aside and said, you're boring. Wow. And you need to... This is deep. Take advantage of this opportunity, which right. is code for can you misbehave and yes. do crazy stuff. Put money in our pockets. And that was the day Watch that it. I ended up stealing the bowling shoes. Oh, my God. Because that was... I felt like, okay, well, I got to do something. <sighs> and Susie was like, what's the craziest thing I could do? I know. I'm taking some bowling shoes. It was a simpler Pets time. Yes. And I frankly regret nothing. Those things right. are great. And you've gotten a lot of use out of those. But I shouldn't have had to feel that way. Right. Feel pressured into making a decision or acting against what is your default, like, moral code. Yes. And that is is what I think is dangerous that I want to be able to talk about with people and at least have me on call if there were something really bad to happen. And it could really prevent a lot of things. We could look for body language. We could look for a whole bunch of stuff that would prevent a lot of bad things from happening, I think. Who opened that road. door, by the way? Oh, I Did Adam do that? I don't know. So that thing you're hearing, if you can hear it, is like a plane yeah. or... Helicopter Freaking or something. locomotive. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I think that you will be a huge help. And hopefully, I guess the show could even hire you, right? To yeah, like that's sort what of I'm consult. hoping to do. Yeah, to be like consult and just, just to, even if it were something like, hey, we're having some weird feelings about this right here. Like these are, the, the crew is often like 28 years old with absolutely no other experience other than holding a camera or, you know, doing their job and they're working in production. So to be able to understand complex, you know, human emotion and interaction that could lead to potentially dangerous or even life-threatening situations mm -hmm. is something that they're not trained to do. Yeah. And look for the same way that they have stunt coordinators there who go, you know what, this is more dangerous than we could just handle. Yeah, it's like, not we'll, safe. Right. Yeah. We'll design the thing, and then we'll leave it to, up to the stunt coordinators to make sure everybody's safe. Yeah. They've designed now the experiment, and they need somebody else to come in and say, okay, well, I need somebody to look out for their mental safety here, with, given what we've designed for them, the same way they do with the stunts. Damn, that was good. I should write that down. <sighs> good thing we're recording this. I'll remember <laughs> it from my notes later when right. I'm writing my bio. Yeah, My you're pitch. so right. It's a shame that that's the way it is. But yeah. yeah, and then they can say, "Hey, yeah, no liability. We're good because look what we did." And then I'll, you know, then it's that's on the me, other thing not on them. Whenever outlets inquire with production companies, like, "Hey, what's your policy?" They'll be like, "You know, we we monitor everybody." With, no, they don't. You know, when they get cast yeah and then like afterwards we check on they do like one phone call right. and they don't they're like so you're all right yeah. yep okay bye-bye yeah. yeah but people who are not in the mental health field yeah and then the people who are are doing the, the only thing they're screening for is like severe mental illness or stuff that would but i've had like, cast members say that they've reached out oh, yeah. to say i need therapy and they're always like um mm -hmm. i did that and they're like mm, well we don't really do that well i need that one thing we definitely do is wear our Rothys. Uh, everywhere. Everywhere. You guys yes. know you see them in my Instagram constantly. Same. And the reason is because they're so comfortable and they look great yeah. and they're made out of recycled plastic Rothy so shoes, you guys. I don't understand what you're waiting for. These are perfect for work. They're great for running around because you feel great and you look cute in them. They're everyday flats for life on the go. They're stylish and versatile. They go with everything from yoga pants to dresses and skirts. They come in a wide range of colors and patterns um, and four different silhouettes, including the ones I wear, which are the sneakers. And like I said, they're made of recycled water bottles, which is amazing that they can even do that. Yeah. It'll blow your mind. Um, did you see the leopard print ones? Yeah, I oh, did. Oh, they're so cute. They I really love that they came out with a whole bunch of those. Check yeah. out all the amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash brain candy. Go to rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash brain candy to get your new favorite flats, comfort, style, and sustainability. These are the shoes you've been waiting for. Head to rothys.com slash brain candy today. Yeah. Meghan Markle has them. Yeah, and, and Sarah and Susie have them. So what else do you need? Yeah, geez. Jeez. Okay. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear about, mm, oh, everything? I, I'm interested to know your opinion about oh, this I because I feel like we might disagree. Okay. Bring it on. What is your thought about the, we've talked about it before, but the explosion of, 
emotional support animals? Mm. Well, at first I was like, mm, it seems like everybody for every reason is getting one, da 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 da. Mm-hmm. But then after reading our book, a book for this month, the our symphony with animals, mm-hmm. and they go through the author. She's so great, and she tells all these stories, and then she also talks about studies that were done on on just how beneficial it is to have an animal there and what you see with people who've survived trauma or gone through like there was something about uh elderly individuals who had survived katrina and how like their lifespan and people who had uh there were 72 percent of people who did not have an animal a, a companion animal survived or like didn't have health related issues afterwards uh and 92 percent or 96 percent who did didn't have any problems so it was a swing of like 25 percent better uh uh outcomes if you had a companion animal Mm -hmm. and how important that is for people and how there was stories about um you know people who worked in uh like hospitals for the criminally insane. And there was a story about a, a inmate who had a cockroach that became his pet. And that this uh, psychiatrist saw the connection between this person and a cockroach and was like, there is humanity in there. And we need to get animals in here. We need to, like, it's important. So now that I see that and understand that and feel it myself, I'm like, yeah, they're real important. Hmm. And it reduces the, the need for, like with PTSD and... Uh, you know, it's a lot of anxiety disorders. It reduces the need for medication, mm-hmm. which I love. Yeah. And if a kitty cat on your lap ca- helps you better than some medication that is after a lifetime of use going to leave you with, you know, some long-term lasting effects or negatively impact your health, heck, what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. So there's my long-winded answer for, yeah. yep, I'm for it. I don't disagree with anything you've said and... I definitely see the mm-hmm. advantages of animals in people's lives. Mm-hmm. I do take issue, though, with the inclusion of them in public spaces mm-hmm. like airplanes, et cetera, mm-hmm. unless it's a service dog. Yeah. For me, there's a difference between there a is. service dog right. and an emotional support animal. Yes. And that there should be a tier yeah. sort of system because it's... Um, it's disruptive to right. other people. You can get an emotional, you can get any animal that you have s- registered as an emotional support animal with the, uh, with a, a note or a letter from a doctor who's currently seeing you. But when you get it registered, there's nothing that indicates whether this animal has been through any training to receive that. And that's where the trouble is where it's like... Don't you think it should? Uh, yeah. I think there should be, like you said, tears. Yeah. Of, it's like this this, this animal right here is necessary because this woman has seizures and it will alert the person that there's about they're about to have yeah. a seizure and let everybody else know. And those things are really important if totally. you're traveling with, you know, yeah. on a plane and you're about to have a seizure. But it's like, this is my emotional support animal. No, you just bought a vest. Yeah. Like yes. that isn't what it is. Yeah, because you can go online and you can register them for free, but it doesn't give you the certification letter. But if you want the letter, it's a like most places are like a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars, and you have a phone or like a Skype interview with some doctor somewhere who's like, "Oh, yep, sounds good," but doesn't do anything to say, "Okay, well, how's your dog trained? What is the?" Well, why the know? hell aren't they doing that? I don't know. I think it's. It's maybe too hard to enforce or or something. I don't know what it is with the cert. You don't seem bothered by it like I am. Like a service dog. I hate when people do stuff like that. Well, I don't like when people take advantage of a system that's absolutely designed to help people who really, really need it. And that kind of thing. Well, because it "Mm, does. I don't like that. Like, my mom was fine to fly on the airplane. She was a freaking tour guide. Sorry, mom, I'm going to call you up. She's a freaking tour guide around the world through her 20s and early 30s. And, like, now you can't fly without your emotional support. You're, no, you just love your dog and you want your dog to come on the plane without having to. Well, and, okay, so there's two problems. First of all, it does negatively affect folks that are, have disabilities or, you know, differences. Mm -hmm. 
And so that bothers me because mm-hmm. then people think, well, you don't need that either. Meanwhile, they really do. Yes, they do. And then uh, um, the second problem is the ways that the airlines treat pets that go um, in the stowaway. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't want my dog no, down there either. It. No, yeah. So I get why yes, people do true. it. They like die. Yeah, it's and really they, sad. it's not a good situation. No. So there's oh, God. also that problem where we need to have yeah. better options Traveling for travel pets. with pets. Is travel one of those things where like we should update it, but we haven't, and we're just like okay? It sure seems that way. Being like it being, ugh, awful? yeah, it makes me mad. Yeah, what's up with that? Well, it's Let's a private not, industry, right. and, and somebody, so they don't yeah. give a shit. They're Damn. just trying to make money, right? That's so sad. Don't get me started about travel. We right. all know how that went. Yep. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I'm not into that. But I have never seen like crazy animals on me a plane either. or anything, but you read about it. Yeah. The peacocks. No, but that was a whole bit. I I'll read tell you afterwards. what, if I sat next to like a doodle or one of those labs that are so cute, yeah. I'd be happy. Beats, so happy. Beats every other human I've ever sat by yeah. on an airplane. I, st- I got to sit next to a cat on <laughs> the last flight I was no. on. And In the seat I, or just well, on the ground? No, the cat was on the ground. <laughs> okay, okay. And the, it's st- like you wouldn't have even known the cat was there. Yeah, it stayed yeah, yeah. in the thing the whole time and was so nice. And I was like, I feel better. I told the guy that. I was Aww. like, I feel better knowing that your cat is right next to me. And I feel emotionally supported. When we well. flew back from Pittsburgh, um, we didn't all get to sit together. So I'm sitting by Lincoln. Mm-hmm. He's at the window. I'm in the middle. And mm-hmm. on my left was this, she must have been nine. Mm. Um, and then her family was across the aisle in those seats. And they did the smart thing, separate the children <laughs> far away. You stay and over there. I was just like, I, I, by the end of the flight, oh, no. I thought I was on candy camera because of how oh, no. often she elbowed me. Oh no. Like full on elbow. Yeah. And then, you know, when the plane lands and everyone stands up, mm-hmm. Oh no. she like beelined and I'm like, thank God. And she like got out, out of my way, but then she must've realized. And by the time, so I had moved over to like start mm-hmm. my exit mm-hmm. and she came back and sat on my lap no she didn't and i was like wait what are we what? doing here that's not okay what right? this child has boundary issues i think yeah she just is oblivious it wasn't like mean or anything she just is totally unaware of other people and i was like mm. what what are we doing here this she was like sounds sorry like a, a child who's not going to flush the toilet after they go to the bathroom too. i thought of you yeah yeah i was like wow conscientiousness she- it's either super high in some kids I've seen or non-existent yeah. in other ones. And I'm like, what happened to people yeah. where it's either, it's two very different children. Yes. And I was just like, you're hot, hot garbage and no wonder your family didn't want to sit with you. What if I'd said that? God. Just <laughs> talk to them awesome. just like they're an adult, just like that. You know how you do that. <laughs> this is why your family didn't want to sit with you. Whether you're an adult or a child, I know you want to sleep in nice sheets. Guaranteed. You know what I mean? You yeah. just want to be cozy and comfy in your I bed. checked the tag of yours when I stayed at your house <laughs> and I was like, sure enough. They are Brooklyn, Brooklyn for sure. I love Brooklyn and sheets. They're the best. You make your home beautiful. It's like a form of self-care. And I washed them when I was done. I didn't yes, have to worry you. about them getting faded or me worrying about like, oh, what's going to happen? I was like, ah, they're good. They'll get softer. Put them in. <laughs> they are luxury. They have linen ones now, which yes. I want to see how those are. Um, but they are, those are great for summer too, if you're in the market. Yeah. Um, so they're luxury sheets, but without the luxury markups. And they are the first direct-to-consumer bedding company. So they work directly with manufacturers and then go to the customer. There's no middleman. It's a beautiful service. It's in their name, so you know it's good. Brooklinen's newest linen collection is amazing. I couldn't recommend their products more for graduates, newlyweds, friends, or family, or for treating yourself to the bedroom upgrade you deserve. Brooklinen.com is giving an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get 10% off and free shipping when you use promo code BRAIN at Brooklinen.com. Brooklinen is so confident in their products that all their sheets, comforters, and towels come with a lifetime warranty. Ooh. The only way to get 10% off and free shipping is to use promo code BRAIN at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code BRAIN. Brooklyn, and these are the best sheets ever. <laughs> uh, so you want to hear uh, some new research that you probably already knew, but it'll still just make you mad? <laughs> we love any stories like that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this was a study that was recently published in the Journal of Sex Roles. There's journals for everything, I guess. And 
oh, it's like a depressing conclusion, but I mean, we already know it, but it's like when you actually see the study, it's like, oh, great, confirms what? what you already know. So they wanted to see how people judged males versus females if they were holding a drink in their hands. At, like a picture of a oh. male holding a drink, picture of a oh. female holding a drink at a bar. Okay. And the r- results showed that a woman holding an alcoholic drink is perceived to be more sexually available and less human. Oh than, my god! Than a woman who is not. How did you rate humanity? Or that also, it doesn't have the same effect with a man holding a drink. We don't. We dehumanize the female, but we do not dehumanize the male holding a drink. So what they would do is they, there were about 400 people, uh, 200, almost 50, 50 men and women. They were asked to describe how drunk and how human they thought a person looked in the photo with words like tipsy or mechanical or like, you know, plastic or something like words that were, that would kind of, uh, uh, cold, like a robot, lack of restraint, like an animal. They gave them all these options. Oh my God. And uh, so then they would use, so they did this, they did the study a few different times to look at like different results, like what would affect it. So sometimes it was just the picture. And then sometimes it would be the picture with a caption underneath where the caption would say something like four drinks in, ha ha, keep it coming. Hooray for the weekend. And when those, when people rated the women way harsher, when she was holding an alcoholic drink and implied she was less human. And anytime they were even more aggressive when there was any comment underneath or any caption that almost well, like I doubled down then. on that. I mean, I really, it must be sending out the wrong message on my Instagram then. I mean, that just said, it says that it ha- it's how we internalize sexism and, and oh, this is the worst part. The women were the harshest to other oh, women. Yes. I hate you hookers. Yep. While we predicted that women drinking alcohol would be dehumanized more than women drinking water or men drinking alcohol, it was still surprising to see it emerge. This was especially shocking because just holding a beer bottle increased perceptions of intoxication and perceptions of sexual availability for women, but not for men. Moreover, it didn't matter who the perceiver was. Male and female perceivers dehumanized women drinking alcohol similarly. Man, that sucks. Yep. Oh my God. And so men, does it make them more human or just stays the same? Stays the same. But what, if you think about like what the implications are that a night out for a female, like when I was thinking about a bunch of stuff, like why we have to call it, oh, mom's not out, girl's not out, whatever, because it almost gives us a pass of like, if you saw that same picture, but underneath it said, mom's finally getting out for the first time in three months, we'd be like, okay, well, I guess that's all right. I'll allow it. But so we, I I was thinking, do we even do those things to soften it, soften it and get rid of the shame that is there and the feeling of judgment even if all we're doing is sitting well, there holding a And beer. I feel that too. Like I am friends weirdly with a lot of sober people. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but I they comment on my pictures and act like I'm a big drinker. Mm-hmm. And I hate that feeling. You're so not, which is the funny thing. And especially when you grew up the way I did, like and your behavior is so yeah. monitor and, monitored and policed, mm-hmm. then now that's why I choose to be more open about my yeah, behavior and yeah. stuff because I do not like that. Mm-hmm. And it it does tend to be projecting. Oh, for sure. You know, like whatever, if they had a problem, yeah. then they are more inclined to think yes. you have one. Yeah. But yeah. man, I hate it. Yep. And the patriarchy thing is a real problem. When my mom stayed here, you know, we have the cross stitch or whatever up there, mm-hmm, embroidery mm-hmm. that says smashing the patriarchy. Yes. Yes. And she was like... What's that about? What it? What's patriarchy? Is that like you hate all men? Oh my God. And um, I was like, no. Be, I said patriarchy is a system, and women participate in it all the time, mm-hmm. especially white women. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that I think a lot of people don't get. Mm-hmm. And like you're describing that the harshest people in mm-hmm. those pictures were in fact women. Mm-hmm. Um, that patriarchy is a thing that is designed to, yes, put men on a pedestal and give them more advantages, but the participants in that system are of all kinds of people. And by nature, it almost turns women against each other. Mm -hmm. And the only way for them to rise is to turn on 
you know, other women. Because it's like, oh, that's your ticket at, like, up the, you know. I'm not. Just so the opposite of how it is for men. Because it's like, oh, mentorship and, oh, my buddy this. And, oh, you, you know, it's not like that. For women. Yeah. And we need to, I can't wait for the day. We'll all know that there's progress by how 12-year-old to 15-year-old girls treat each other. I mean, I am encouraged by how we've talked about this before. Like when a girl posts a picture on Instagram or a woman, there does tend to be a lot of women and girls who come in and say like, yes, queen, you look so hot. Yes. Um, More than there used to be. Yes. I see it all the time. Yeah. That everyone tells each other they're so beautiful. I don't know if that's just posturing on Mm -hmm. social media or if it translates to real life Mm -hmm. as well, Mm -hmm. but... I'm encouraged by that, and hopefully yeah, there are more women groups and things like that. Those are kind of popping up. Yeah. Those are, good. Those are really good. We need that. I hope it's true and not just sort of like we see what we want to see in right. the world. Ugh, right. I don't know, but yeah. babe, that, that is so that. depressing. I'm not surprised with a loose part or whatever you said where they think the, she's yeah, like sexually, easy. Yeah, sexually, uh, yeah. But I am about the human. Yeah, the thing. human. Because what's more it. human than wanting to get wasted? <laughs> right, super. <laughs> what are they talking about? I'll, uh, have, I'll send it to Dahlia and see if she can throw it in the oh, yeah. old newsletter. You can too. sign up for our newsletter on our website, the thebraincandypodcast.com. Yes. Um, and you can also go online and check out Lightstream mm-hmm. because it's fantastic. It's a wonderful service. If you're tired of credit card bills with high interest rates and you are ready to pay off your credit card balances and start saving money, then you should try Lightstream because it's a credit card consolidation loan with rates as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay. Um, and it's a super easy application online. And you can even get the money as soon as the day you apply, which is amazing. And they just want people with good credit to get a better loan experience. So just for our listeners, apply now and get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get the discount is to go to lightstream.com slash brain candy, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M.com slash brain candy. Subject to credit approval rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash brain candy for more information. Nobody wants high interest rates, Nobody. so give Not that a guy. whirl. Um, we have a guest. Oh, yeah. And I spoke with her. Her name's Tina Selig, and she wrote a book, uh, What I Wish I Knew When I Was 20. Oh, I should have read that when I, I was know. 20. This is what I love about it is that it it's great for like a gift, like for a graduate or something like yes. that, but it's also great just for like... Mm-hmm. everyone like a little refresher yeah like, remember when you were 20 and thought this and now you don't because you're yeah this is good and she's a phd in neuroscience okay. she's super I'm smart sold yes I'm already in. and she's so cool because she teaches classes and she has these exercises that her students have to do to like learn how to think outside of the box i love this i do too i mean those are those magical teachers, the professors, I would yeah. say, that make all the difference in learning and how badass. Yeah. And I'm so excited to have her on here. I told Adam he's got to read it because that's the kind of stuff that gets him excited. Because yes. his brain is not like a typical person. He struggles with reading. He struggles with um, just... I don't know what you almost like linear thinking and yeah. it's more a, and but it's more abstract. I have never met somebody who is more like um like ingenuity like can say look yeah. at here's what you have here's the job you need to do yeah. use these things to get the job yeah. done and he'll be able to do it every time yeah and I'm not He's that like, way I would want to be with him on a deserted desert island and yeah. I'd be like oh we're, we're surviving. We're fine. He's very, he's a creative thinker. A deserted desert island. That was a, you know what I mean. I think that sometimes he can get down on himself. We all can. Yeah. Like when we feel like we're not good enough or whatever. But if you read her book, you'll see how she flips the script and yes. makes you see that things you think are bad are good. And it's just a really, it's a quick read. It's easy, but it's something that you think about later where you're good. like, oh, I can apply that to my life. And she was really fun to talk to. So. Uh, what I Wish I Knew When I Was 20 by Tina Selig. Um, check that out. It's a great gift, or I think you guys will like it as well. And uh, welcome, Tina. Thank you so much for coming on Brain Candy. I'm so excited to talk to you about your book. 
Well, thank you so much for including me. I can't believe how fancy you are. Do you ever sit around thinking about, like, I can't believe how awesome I am? Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no matter where you are in your life, you're always a work in progress. I mean, that's really nice, but I mean, your credentials are outrageous. So I'm just so impressed with you. Um, the book that is out again, or, you know, the sort of expanded edition, What I Wish I Knew When I Was 20, originally came out 10 years ago. I'm wondering what that was like, the moment 10 years ago when you put this book out there and everyone went crazy over it. Well, the book is essentially a letter to my son. Mm -hmm. Uh, He turned 20 the week the book came out, and the book was essentially came right, it flowed right out of me from my heart. It's a book, Mm -hmm. really and truly, what I wish I knew when I was 20, sharing that with my son as he was going off into the world. And uh, I was surprised and delighted by the response and completely um, pleased that my publisher allowed me to create an updated edition. So the new book is about 30% different new content uh, because I ripped out a lot of stories that seemed dated and added in a lot of new material. So, um, you know, I learned a lot in the last 10 years as well. Well, what do you think it was about it at that time that struck a chord? I believe, and I've asked a lot of people about this, why this book was meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. And because the book is about how do you really craft the life you dream to live? We are so often given rules by other people and scripts for our life, and everybody wants to tell us what to do. But really, it's up to each of us to craft the life we dream to live, and that's what the book is about, uh, how I realized this and uh, the ways that you can go about doing it. Yeah. Well, and you do such a great job, and it's so... My husband's not a reader. He He's probably read one book in his life, but I'm like, you have to read this book because I think it's for everybody and it's so palatable and relatable. I, I mean, I assume that's why it struck a chord. You you have a real gift for explaining what feels complicated and making it really um, accessible. Well, did he read it? <laughs> he said, put it in my drawer. So that's what I have to do after I finish today with you. Then he gets it. He gets custody. <laughs> Okay, um, cool. what I'm curious to know what he thinks. Yeah, <laughs> I'll report back. It might take a minute. He's that's not his gift. But um, what do you feel like did change in the last ten years in the world that you felt like you needed to, you know, do a revision? Well, lots of things. First of all, we're in a very different context now than we were ten years ago. Yeah. And so a lot of the examples, I mean, companies or people that I talked about were ones that young people today might not even know who they are. So. <laughs> I have a lot of updated examples. Plus, I've been teaching for 10 more years and have a lot more um, examples from my classroom and insights that I've had uh, that build upon the things that were already in the book. Do you feel like you've changed? Oh, you bet. And in fact, you know, it's it's quite funny you ask that. My dad just turned 93, and uh, he's 93, you know, going on 23. (laughs) And I said, Dad, you know, do you think you've changed a lot in the last 10 years? And he looked at me and he said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just an incredible you know, insight that we essentially are constantly a work in progress. There's never a time when you feel like you're done growing, you're done learning, you're done having insights. Even at, I'm going to be 62 in a couple of weeks. And I am surprised every day when I have some aha, like, oh, gosh, I really wish I knew that before. Mm-hmm. Or now I understand something that about the world and the way people interact or anything. Um, They're just new insights every single day. Well, since it was sort of written with your son in mind, was he, does he see you as a sort of wise sage or is he just like rolling his eyes like the rest of our kids? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I do think that he has absorbed a lot of these concepts, which is kind of fun to watch him, um, you know, using them in his own life and giving this guidance to friends of his. Uh, But he's also a really smart young man, and he is a great sounding board. So Mm -hmm. when I talk to him about these ideas, he often pushes back. He really challenges me, which is fabulous. Honestly, uh, it it is such a gift to have family members, especially your kids, who can uh, really help you grow. 
Yes. And, you know, it's a dialogue, right? So you can, and, and your exactly. kids are fine exactly. telling you how you're, you're the worst too. So. Oh yeah. And he's also really <laughs> uh, happy to give me feedback on what's not going well. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what I did wrong. You know, he's been certainly not shy about that. <laughs> Tell me. But that's okay. I mean, you know, I, I do believe that uh, feedback is a gift. It doesn't always get, you know, delivered in a beautiful package. <laughs> and that even when people say things that might be, you know, hard to hear, you have to step back and say what was, what was true in that. I know that's what the was, worst when they're right. And you know what, it, but it allows us to grow and change <laughs> it again. Does. You know, it I does. think it, part of it comes from just being confident enough to take that feedback and decide um, what you want to actually take and what you don't. I mean, I know I was talking to someone the other day about being an author and getting edited. Well, I've written so many books that I, at the beginning, I, when I got editing, I mean, I felt like my manuscript was being dipped in blood, you know, red <laughs> pencils. Oh, my gosh. And now I appreciate it. And I realize I don't have to take all suggestions, but it's interesting to see them. And yeah. in many cases, they're really good suggestions. Well, I feel like that's a gift, though, or a, a skill to be able to hear the feedback and not take it personally and learn from it. So you must have now mastered that technique. Uh, well, I have to tell you, I've had to take a lot of feedback in my life, so I kind of <laughs> get good at it. One of the things I really liked about the book is how you say things that people probably don't expect to hear, like when you talk about quitting. Um, you know, we have that idea that quitting is a bad thing and a moral failure or weakness. And you kind of flipped that script on that. And I wanted to talk to you more about that. What is it about quitting that you feel like can be a positive? Quitting can be one of the most powerful things you ever do. I, I was thinking the other day about, I put up some, I actually wrote on my whiteboard to kind of remind myself that there's a big difference between being pushed and taking a leap. You know, there are often times in our life where we get pushed to make a change. You know, you get fired from a job or someone, you get break up in a relationship or something happens, you know, in your life that forces you to have a discontinuity and to do something different. But it's much harder if you have to make that decision yourself and you have to actually leap. Yes. And you need to jump out of a perfectly good airplane or an airplane that seems like it's perfectly good. Mm -hmm. And uh, quitting is hard especially if something is good enough. Mm. You know, sometimes, and that's the biggest problem, when you're in a situation that's good enough, well, is good enough good enough? If you have a job that's good enough, if your relationship that's good enough, oh. right? If you're living somewhere that's good enough, do you at some point say, you know, this isn't good enough, it's not good enough, and I'm going to have to do something new. But it's hard. It's hard to break up with your life, I guess. Oh, it's so hard. And I, I'm often paralyzed or crippled by the idea of regret. I don't want to regret anything. I don't want to regret quitting or not quitting. And so I get to the point where I'm like, I don't know what to do because I don't want to take the chance. But you lay out a really helpful, at least way to think about it where it's not so scary, I think. Exactly. And I think the key is to really look at, is there really a downside? Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. And I was on um, the Today Show earlier this week, and I was kind of nervous. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't normally get nervous doing public speaking because I do so much of it, but it was a really short segment, and, you know, I didn't really get to meet the host beforehand and oh lots God. of moving parts. And then I thought, okay, so what's the worst thing that can happen? And what, mean, what did you think get, it was? I got, like, I could mess up in this, you know, three and a half minute segment on national TV and probably nobody cares. Mm. Like, nobody is really, it, I would be disappointed in myself and that would be it. Yeah. So you realize you go on to the next opportunity. Yeah. I realize it really, if, honestly, if it didn't work out well, it was not going to be the end of my life. It was an opportunity Let's try it. Well, right. Like a lot of that stuff is you might remember it forever, but nobody else will. Nobody else does. In fact, one of my favorite um, sort of quotes comes from a colleague of mine who I believe was quoting Shirley MacLaine, <laughs> who the 20, 40, 60 rule. Do you know this? No. Okay. So the 20, you're worried about what everyone thinks about you. At 40, you go, screw it. I don't care what <laughs> anyone thinks of me. 
And at 60, you say, oh, nobody's thinking of me. <laughs> I mean, nobody is really thinking that deeply about you. You know, it's funny because in this Today Show episode, it, which actually went very well, but one thing I was like, my hair was funny. Like the, my, something about the back of my hair was flipping up. And, I, you know, nobody in the world besides me noticed that. Right. Nobody was paying attention to whether my hair wasn't perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept saying, you know what, if that's the worst thing about the episode is that, you know, part of my hair was flipping up in the back. I mean, honestly, who cares? Right. But uh, we, we can be our own. We take ourselves thing. so seriously. Yes. We take ourselves too seriously. And so whether it's, you know, applying for a job or being on a podcast or asking someone for on a date, you know, taking these risks in our life, we should realize that if we don't take these risks, we miss out on huge opportunities. Yeah. And that was the point. Yeah. Like, should I have said no because I was nervous to be on the show? Of course not. <sighs> right. And then when you were done, didn't you feel so good? I felt great. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the point. Mm-hmm. You got through it. And exactly. you did great and everyone loved you. And exactly. <laughs> but I think that's the point. If you don't, you know, as they say, you don't, uh, you miss, 100% of the shots you don't take. For sure. But that fear can be paralyzing for people. And so I, that's why what I love about your book is all the things that you lay out are applicable. People can use these techniques and think about the world in a new way and their life in a new way. That's so awesome. You're doing the Lord's work over there. <laughs> You're so sweet. Well, I, I really encourage people to look at things from a very different perspective. Yeah. Too challenge assumptions, to break the rules, to make their own luck, to give themselves permission to do things differently. And I think that's what people were hungry for, hungry for permission to craft their own path. Well, and you were describing an exercise you did in your class where, you know, you were trying to teach people how to do that, how to think outside the box and look at things in a new way and you give them a little bit of money and try to, to, they, they're allowed to use that money to then try to make more money. And the different exercises and the ways that they did it, they uh, found value in things that maybe they otherwise wouldn't. And so you gave them this exercise and then they were able to learn from it. How do you think that people can learn that skill if they aren't able to take your class or you know, try these unconventional exercises. So the exercise was, it's the opening story in the book where I give my students an envelope with $5 in it and each team has as much time as they want over the course of a week to brainstorm. But as soon as they open the envelope, they have two hours to create as much value as possible, to make as much money starting with that $5. And the things that people do are totally mind-bending and <laughs> people reframe the problem and they realize that the $5 is a limitation and they assume that, you know, really their value is in the two hours and they, they end up doing really interesting things. And that project has taken on a new life over the last few years where I've given people instead of $5, I've given them paper clips or post-it notes or water bottles or a loaf of bread. And um, what I found is that no matter what you give, no matter how small it is, in fact, in Japan, I told them they had to create value out of the contents of a garbage can, which is, of course, negative value, the things that <laughs> people, That's you pay funny. people to take away. Right. And uh, my objective with this, was to get people to look at the everyday things in their life, you know, the pen sitting on their desk, the handful of paper clips, in a new light as opposed to looking at these as mundane objects, looking at everything as the seed for something really remarkable. And that was really my objective. What the and, heck did they um, do with garbage, though? Oh, my God, amazing. <laughs> Come on. So, as, you know, you go and they t one team took a bunch of old socks or, you know, mother had cleaned out her brother's sock drawer and took all these socks and cut them up and sewed them together and made a sweater. That was wow. really cool. Or took a bunch of yard waste and turned it into a beautiful mural and, uh, you know, with leaves and palm fronds. And it was really, really cool. It's amazing. So there are, you can look at even the stuff that's in your garbage and figure out, you know, hey, what, what value is there? I think that is so cool. I mean, do you notice any patterns with regard to the age of the student with how creative they are, or it just runs the gamut? Um, I find 
that it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Once you create a situation and a room where people feel empowered to be creative and are given permission to do so, anybody at any age can do this. I, I, I could be in a room full full of lots of corporate. In fact, uh, last week I was giving a talk to a room of 350 men for a large company, all of their whole sales force. It was a large oh company. Gosh. And they were all wearing this, look like the same gray <laughs> uniform. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it was really, it was like, wow, I didn't realize it was a uniform. And uh, <laughs> guess what? I was able to do these exercises. I had been warned that, oh, this is a very stodgy crowd. And all I had to do was give a few little prompts and pretty soon everybody was fully engaged. Yes. And honestly, you could do the same thing with a handful of young kids Yeah. or, you know, a bunch of people in a retirement home. Everybody is, is primed to do this. Yeah. I think it's a great thing to do if you want to do it in your own home with your kids because they mm-hmm. find it fun. They don't think it's work at all and they'll learn so much. That's what I love about your book. It's for everybody. Well, thank you. Um, do you, one thing that I wanted to ask you about is in the book, you talked about how the concept of luck and how oftentimes we can have self-fulfilling prophecies about things based on our attitude and our openness to ideas and people. And I'm wondering, do you think there is no such thing as luck at all or uh, it oh, just I think helps? Luck is, I think luck is everywhere. I mean, mm. as I describe I don't know if you watched my TED talk about this. No, I haven't um, seen it. Oh my goodness. You should, uh, I, I encourage you to take a look okay, at it. Okay. Uh, my TED talk about um, all the little risks you can take that increase your luck. And um, I basically believe deeply that luck is like the wind. It's always blowing hmm. and it's up to each of us to build a sail to catch it. Hmm. And there are lots of ways to catch luck. And it means taking lots of little risks. And these risks can be social risks or financial risks or social risks or do uh, that push you out of your comfort zone that open the door to really amazing things. Yeah. I, I was wondering, because I thought, I wonder how I'd feel if I was reading that and I were a person of color. Would I have pushback about that and feel? Because I wanted, I didn't want to conflate the term luck with privilege. But sometimes well, I was okay, wondering. Okay, so this is super important. Yeah, there's yeah. a difference between fortune, chance, and luck. Oh, okay. Fortune is the things that happen to you, the things your eye color, your skin color, where you're born, who your parents are. These are things you have no control over. Mm. Chance is something where you have to do something to take a chance. You need to buy a lottery ticket. You need to ask someone on a date. You need to mm-hmm. roll the dice. You know, there might be a low probability that you're going to get what you're hoping for, but you have to take a chance. And then luck is something over which you have much more control. Mm-hmm. And yes. the idea is that luck, you have a lot of agency, and you create your own luck. So okay. on, in, in my world, I mean, I, you could even conflate the world luck and success. Mm. You know, luck seems so, you know, much more sort of sexy and, yeah. and out of control yeah. and success feels much more um, prescribed. But if you look at people who have been successful, you might say they're lucky. But if you look behind the scenes, you'll see all the little things they did to make themselves lucky. I love that. You're good with words, man. Uh, uh, maybe <laughs> I should are. write the book. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're in the right business. Um, okay. Last thing is um, I love the takeaway at the end about embracing the uncertainty. I think that's something we should all try to do, but it's really hard. If you had sort of one uh, thing people could apply today to do that, what would it be? If there was one thing that I would add. Okay. I think, let's see what I will say this morning. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because I could say a lot of things. Um, I (laughs) would say... To think of most of the rules around you as recommendations. Obviously, Ooh. there's something for laws. You don't want to break the law. But, you know, most rules are recommendations. I how you apply this. to college, how you get a job, how you make a movie, how you run for political office. You know, there are all of these things that seem like they're rules of the game. Here's the recipe. But honestly, most rules are recommendations. I love that. And you can find your way to the solution you're looking for by taking a very different path if the first path is blocked. This is great advice. I love that. Um, 
Well, we thank you. have one thing that we ask everybody that comes on the show, which is um, what do you keep in the trunk of your car if you have a car? What do I keep in the trunk of my car yeah. if I... Like if you have a car. Some people in New York don't have oh, cars. If I, if I have a car. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. fact, I know exactly what I keep in my trunk of my car because I had to take everything out the other day. Because oh, I, I know I was, I was rear-ended and I had to take the car and to get... Somebody ran right into oh, me no. and stopped by. Yeah, it's... Yeah, but anyway, Wait, did so you, when put, that happened, did you okay. have that moment where you were, like, when you stubbed your toe, where you were like, I'm going to make this an opportunity? Um, you know, um, I was in complete shock, to be honest. I oh had no gosh. idea what happened. But, you know, it, the thing that was amazing is my son was with me. I just <sighs> picked him up at the airport, and he was my hero. It's just amazing. He just instantly jumped up and took oh, care of everything. Oh, my and gosh, It blew I love my that. mind about how capable he was when I was really quite out of it. Um, oh. But I was putting everything back in my car yesterday. And so what is there? There's definitely extra jackets in case it's cold, yes. extra blankets, extra water, an emergency kit, and a walking stick. So that a, a really nice walking stick. So if I ever am out hiking, I've got that there. Oh my gosh. You're the first person to ever have that. That's so cool. Yeah. Nobody's well, someone had sent me this that. fabulous, a black thorn walking stick from Ireland <gasps> and it stays in my car. So I'm always ready for, ready for a hike. Oh, that's great. I love that idea. All right. You're off the hook then. I hope everybody reads what I wish I knew when I was 20. It is essential. It's a great gift for a graduate, but it's also great for us grown ups and um, just everybody who wants to think of things in a new way. So congratulations on freaking 10 years international bestseller. Ah, thank you so much. It's really been my pleasure. Keep up the good work. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.